Well, I want to congratulate you, first of all. This is an amazing film. Oh, thank you very much. It was such a good film. And um, I'm saying this honestly because I'm not the biggest fan of timepieces. Right. But this didn't feel like a timepiece to me at all. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. that's that's the aim because, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm the same as you. Sometimes yeah. period dramas or things that, yeah, in the past I kind of try and steer clear of. But I think mm. this has got, you know, it's got timeless um, ideas behind it, you know, that I love courage and friendship and the relationships and but everything feels quite modern in a way yes. in terms of how the film's put together and the performances and things like that so uh, I'm glad yeah glad you felt that way I enjoyed it like the themes everything like you said it was very relatable you could Good. see friendship you could see love you could see falling in love and you could see like the growing of of uh, of a boy into a, a man but in the most vulnerable way. And I think you nailed that. Hey, thank you yeah. very much. You did a very oh, good Oh, this job. is a glowing review. We oh, need no, to let I, everybody see this. I really liked it. And it was when I was handed this and they were like, it's Tolkien, it's a period piece. It's, and I was like, well, <laughs> let's see how we do here. But it was actually no. really good. And I really yeah. enjoyed it. And um, I watched it after an 11 hour flight and it, I stayed awake, so. Blimey. You're right. All right. <laughs> good okay. job. We did all right. Yeah, it was a really good film. Um, how, well, how did you prepare for the role? Uh, how did we prepare? I, it was, uh, I mean, it's odd because, it, I mean, I could watch videos and listen to recordings of Tolkien later in life, but there wasn't so much to study mm -hmm. when he was younger. So I'd go back and read biographies and kind of learn where he grew up and yeah. um, the circumstances of that and then and then figure out an accent f that seemed appropriate for yeah. that. And then, um, and then just from reading his work and trying to copy paintings of his and um, kind of doing my amateur sleuth. Uh, no, it was really good. Um, basically, and then and then also the, um, just working with Derme in terms mm -hmm. of creating the relationships and 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 how you know they emotionally affected him through his through his youth. The relationship between you and Lily was awesome, but I think the the bromance that you made with the boys was really like I felt that I yeah. remember growing up and having that group of friends, and I really related to that part of that movie. Yeah, and it's so important for yeah. Tolkien as well because you know, as as I say, becoming an orphan at such a young age and then. Um, trying to find his safe place, but also meeting these young guys who have similar interests in, in creativity mm -hmm. and art, and then finding the bravery to share what he's been creating and his passions with them, um, but also losing them through World War One and, exactly. and how that affects him and, and him kind of carrying the beacon forward after after they can, can no longer do that. Well, you did an incredible job. I really liked the movie. Hey, nice one. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much for this interview. Have a great day. You as well. It's really nice to meet you. You as well. I loved the movie. Thank you. It's so weird to hear you without the accent. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A lot you, of people assume I'm going to have an English accent. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, I had one as a kid, but not anymore. You lost, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's what happens. I also grew up in Mexico, and people also assume, like, where's your little your little accent? And I'm like, oh, it's gone. It's gone, yeah. Like, I got here I'm sure it comes first... back naturally, though. You Sometimes, yeah. but I was, when I was in the first grade, it would, like, I was like that cute little accent girl, and now they're like, what happened? And I'm like, I grew up. I know. Yeah. They used to make fun of me. Yeah. I, I loved your, your accent, and I think Thank you, did, you. you did so well with it. Thank you. Um, I started learning British slang. Oh. When I, well, on the plane here, um, and... You might know more than I do. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting, but... Um, as I was learning like British slang, there's different types of accents and you've done different Oh, yeah, there's accents. lots of different dialects. Yeah, and you do so good with it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think uh, This role was one of my favorites of yours. Thank because you. Because of the accent, you played such a Like you held your own in this movie. Thank you. Yeah, and that's that's not something I've I've seen a lot I, I feel like Edith was someone though who very much existed in a in a very specific environment mm -hmm. where she wanted more for herself and she had to, if she had, if she had something to say, she almost had to make it more vocal than normal because she was a woman, she was an orphan, she had a very specific social standing and in order to be heard, she had to oh, be yeah. a bit louder. Not to mention the era. Of course, Not the era was yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, she she really was, she was almost born in the wrong era. Yeah, and it's one of those things where you were really the, the woman behind the man. Mm. That like every man behind every man, there's a even stronger woman, and you got that, and you nailed that. Thank you. I think they had a really great relationship, though, where they were very much on each other's level, which I loved. I think he yeah. valued her just as much as she valued him, and I loved that there was this um, real kinship or this real sense of uh, um, soulmate quality yeah. uh, with the two of them, but also him and his friends, and how that 
it just speaks to the idea that soulmates can be romantic, they can be friendships, they can, they be, can be so many different types of things. And as long as you value one another on the same level and treat with each other with respect, you're going to get from each other what it is yeah. that you give. And I loved that about their but relationship. I, I love that you definitely held your own. Like you weren't afraid to say, hey, this, this, and this. Yeah. Again, in a time when women are sit there and look pretty. And, and like yeah, in silence, job. like you can only play piano. You can yeah, only do that. You can yeah. only do that. And I, you saw that in the beginning of the movie where she was like, just keep playing. Yeah. And no, you definitely did it. You yeah. held your own and you even served an, an inspiration especially in the tree scene right when you were dancing yeah i thought that was so dope thank you yeah. thank you yeah that was fun he he just said now let's just do some elven dancing i was like okay whatever that means it'll yeah. be it'll be fun it just she felt very grounded and very um at peace with herself and they had such a strong relationship that yeah. i think she could let go with him whereas she had to be so poised and put together in her daily life he yeah. was a sense of escape for her yeah, because you essentially were still, like, his best pal. Yeah. You grew up together. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah they were orphans together, mm -hmm. which I never realized. I never knew that about them. Yeah, and I learned so much about this movie. My boyfriend's actually the biggest Lord of the Rings fan. Oh, really? When he heard I was doing this, he was, like, telling me you need to notice this, this, and this. And I was, like, I have maybe seen The Hobbit once. Right, right, you right. Know? Oh, how awesome, though. You guys can go together and yeah. see if he can pick out the little Easter eggs. And when I told him everything about the movie, he was like, and the he was like, I told him about the dancing and the trees, and she was like, he was like, that was the inspiration. Like, you don't understand what you just watched. You don't understand what oh, you just witnessed. Oh, that's awesome. And I was like, yeah, it was pretty. <laughs> like, <laughs> I want like, to nice. know his reaction to the movie. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I know he's going to love it. I really like the movie because, I mean, I'm not the biggest timepiece fan, but this didn't feel like a timepiece to me. Yeah. Well, I, that's what I love. I think she's super relevant. And the, the, the boys, the way that their relationship was so, like the camaraderie and the chemistry between them and with um, Edith and Tolkien, it's, it's timeless. You know, yeah. you can associate with different qualities of them no matter if you're male, female, what time period you're from, yeah. you know, how old you are. I think that's the beauty of Tolkien's writing as well, is that it doesn't matter what generation you're of, you can was, gather something from it, something inspiring. It was very relatable, and I definitely felt that. And thank you. Well, thank you so much thank for you. your time. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Incredible. Actually, I was going to wear fancy boots, but then I packed two of the same, sh like, foot. Oh, my God, two left feet. Yeah, two left feet. <laughs> matching the black and white theme that we've got. I know. Yeah. I feel like... You can I be really in the squad. this one out, but there you go. I don't feel as bad anymore. Right, and mine are actually very old and quite embarrassingly shit looking. <laughs> well, I didn't get any new shoes on yeah. time. I thought these about 10 years ago. It, yeah. it was either these or the hotel slippers, so I was like, right. oh, don't chance it with them. <laughs> Just yeah. rocking up yeah. cozy. You made the right choice, I think. This was, I've been looking forward to this interview. You guys were my favorite part of the movie. Oh, yeah. thank you. Because I grew up with four brothers. Right. So well, seeing this film, well yeah. it was like me growing up with my, with my brothers. Mm. Like, you really saw, like, how you guys fought, but how you guys <laughs> loved each other, got mm. along, at the, and then still supported each other. Mm. That was my favorite part of the film. Oh, good. Ah, Thank cool. You. Yeah. yeah, it is. We were talking about that earlier. That I mean, the fact that they were able to sort of overcome those things, and they yeah. could they could clash, and then their their relationships were strong enough to get through it. It was really mm. it was really nice. Yeah, you guys did a great job of really like playing off of each other too. Yeah. 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 Well, I, that was that was the great thing about working with these two boys and Nick is is that you know constant curveballs were being thrown the whole time yeah you never really knew where you sat which kept you on your toes and as an actor that's a gift mm. that's yeah i bet that had to be so much fun even like on or offset it probably felt like the same because i walked in you guys are running around <laughs> yeah. Yeah. sorry about that no that's completely fine like i said <laughs> i feel too. like yeah. i feel like i'm with my brothers we're again. playing tag uh. <laughs> oh did you guys grow up playing those games oh yeah tag. climbing trees climbing trees yeah Tag. We play a game called Cribby in Belfast, which is you get a ball, a soccer ball, and you have to hit the curb. Oh, God, I love Kirby. Sometimes when you have no money. Cribby. Really? Yeah. We play a game like that also in, in Mexico. It's, yeah? It's what happens when you have no money. <laughs> What's it called? What's the thing called? Um, uh, pero, Palotera. Like, palotera. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to bring that back to Belfast. Yeah. Please yeah. do. A big old game of Palotera. Yeah. Let's get a game of Palotera. Let's get a game of Palotera. It literally is just street soccer. And if you got to hit like the street you lamp changed. or a sign, you're like 10 points extra. If you oh threw it over the car, you got more points as well. No, if you hit a car, that was like, you won. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 good yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a champ for the week. You won, but also you got in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how did you guys... Uh, prepare for these roles because I mean a lot of fun and games but they were serious mm. roles mm. at the end of the day yeah. Yeah, yeah I luckily had a book of poetry um that I just used as a sort of bible or a blueprint just to you know uh, look at and say when would he have written this poem who would that have been about um and I just used that that was very helpful yeah yeah I think, sorry no mm -hmm. go ahead 
No, I think Aww, I think each of so the. God, no, please you. First. <laughs> no, you no, you. Go. You no, go. you go. No, you go. Um, yeah, I, th I think like each of the characters are, were, had a really defined position in the group. Um, you know, I think like Christopher is a bit of the antagonist sometimes, but also for for the benefit of Tolkien and Robert. Um, Robert's early relationship with Tolkien was was a little bit tumultuous as mm. well. But then I think they both saw something in each other. That, that kind of need for for acceptance and belonging, yeah. um, and and it was that was kind of apparent through the letters as well um, that Robert wrote back home. Oh yeah, um, which uh, which I read a lot of, and they were really uh, mm. eye opening. That's a way to pr that's method, right? There. <laughs> that's a way to prepare for film. Yeah. Being actual letters. That's he is dope. he is called Daniel Day Lewis. Uh, yeah. on set. Oh. Yeah, I insist on it yeah. from everyone. Yeah. Oh, good Daniel. for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't have as much um, resources uh, for Christopher, just purely because they weren't published. Yeah. Um, so I read a lot of um, Robert's letters and Jeffrey's poems and um, allowed that to inspire, really, and, yeah. and, and feed me with some kind of, give me a hook to start on and yeah. then I could build around it. Um, and it's also, you know, figuring out the dynamic in the TCBS and what, what, where the void was and where yeah. you could, where I could fill as Christopher. Yeah. It was great. It was really, really freeing. And Dome was great in that sense. He was allowing us to um, explore, throw each other curveballs, be, um, be creative and imaginative. Yeah. And so you guys did a great job. Thank you. I love the movie. You guys made a timepiece not feel like a timepiece. Mm. Oh, That's thanks. amazing. Because I'm not the biggest fan of timepieces, but. Yeah. This movie didn't feel like a timepiece at all. I could relate to the friendship. Like Good. I said, I saw my brothers. Because they were real people. Yeah. yeah. And like I think I could... Delmay, our director, he was definitely, I remember him saying that quite early on, mm. that, that this would have been a group of lads. And yeah. it's, it's easy to sort of place the historical context on it. But actually, had we gone back to that time, we would have completely related to them. Exactly. And, and, well, thank you guys so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.